Welcome everyone to another episode of Boss Talks. I'm Christine Drummond and I'm here with my co-host Joel Lord. And today we are getting straight into the nitty gritty and it's a dirty word, Joel. It's a dirty word that people don't often like out there. We're talking about sales today. Now, we know that um, you guys are getting a lot of value because you're sending us a lot of feedback and we are loving the feedback that we're getting and we love the reviews. So please keep them coming. Now, our only um, quest, our only request, I should say, is that you share this on for everyone that's getting value out there, which is pretty much 100% of our listeners. Um, we would love you to share this, you know, share it with business people, share it with people that want to be the boss of their life, share it with anyone that you feel would also benefit from this information. Because we, we tell you guys all the time, like we've done the hard yards, we've We've invested a lot of money and now we're just regurgitating what we've learned to help you guys improve your life, but also to help us retain what we've learned as well. That's the quickest way to, you know, to learn is by teaching it on. So we love this podcast. Um, it's definitely a part of our life. We've been super consistent with it. And today we want to really um, bring sales to life. I don't know about you, but um, you know, I used to tell myself that I was terrible at sales. You know, I was in a sales job. I was actually getting paid for a sales job uh, about oh, 11, 12 years ago now. And I was, you know, it's, it's a story that I carry around with me. I was so crap at it that they moved me out of sales into customer care. Now, this is a story. Do you think that's an empowering story for me or a disempowering story when it comes to sales? And I've just realized that I'm telling myself a very big disempowering um, story there. And I'm really great at sales because you know what sales is? Sales is relationships. Sales is communication. Sales is connection. Sales is, you know, um, um, helping people. It's about giving. Sales is not about the product. It's about people. If you're in any business, it doesn't matter if you're a hairdresser, it doesn't matter if you're a plumber, a car salesperson, it doesn't matter if you're network marketing, you're in the people business. And that's what sales is about. And if you know how to take care of people, then you're probably likely to be very good at sales because you're very good at building that trust and rapport with people. So what I'm going to sort of share with you guys today is to get you to change your mindset around sales to you know, a lot of the time when we say sales, people feel awkward and icky about it. No one likes to be sold to, but guess what, guys? Every person on the planet is affected by sales. I don't care whether you're a child, whether you're a parent, whether you don't even have a job, whether you're in business, an entrepreneur, sales affects every single person on the planet. And that is because you need to be able to sell your position. You need to be able to sell your opinion, you need to be able to influence people. You need to be able to negotiate. You need to be able to co convince and persuade your opinion to make that sale, that transaction. You know, let's say that you are, um, you know, arguing with your partner about something. You're selling your opinion. You're selling your side of the story to your partner. Now, they may or may not agree with you. It doesn't matter. But if you're very good at persuading, if you're very good at negotiating, then it's likely you will, you'll probably win that battle. Okay? So it doesn't matter. And kids these days are very good at sales. They're very good at asking for what they want. They're very good at putting their you know, um, foot down and demanding what it is that they want. And you're either going to crumble to their demands, which means that they win the sale, or you're going to stand your ground and you're going to win the sale by you know, reinforcing your values and why they can't have the thing that they're asking for. So Joel, I know that you love this topic. I know that you love sales. You're a numbers guy. What do you, and how do you feel about this topic that we're bringing to our listeners today? Well, Christine, um, I could quite easily turn boss talks into sales talks. <laughs> and we can just talk about sales all day long because it's, it's just awesome. Like think about it. So sales, let's just get down to it. If at the moment you have a product or a service or something like that, and you feel under pressure not to share that product with the world or sell it or anything like that. Hey, maybe you're in network marketing and you got people giving you their, their limiting beliefs or they're probably not even, it's probably you. It's probably in your own head. 
because um, I share stuff about network marketing all the time and I don't get any hate. <laughs> so uh, I used to think I would, but getting back on target, um, why would you ever be embarrassed about doing whatever it takes to put food on your family's table, to take care of your family? Like one of the things that I love about, and I know you're going to bring him up soon about Grant Cardone is that's one of his objection handling. When someone like says, Hey, you're being a bit, you're trying to sell me something. He's like, absolutely. I'm trying to sell you something. I'm not going to apologize for it either. I'm not going to apologize for trying to do what's best for my company that I represent what's best for uh, my family and feeding my family and what's best for me, you know? So he, he's, he's tough on that. So that's, that's what I, I also believe that I also 100% believe it. So you're right, Christine, you are selling in, it is about relationships and it's, you know, let's look at it on a totally different level. Let's take money off the table. What if you were really terrible at sales and you're, and had you been great at sales, you would have been able to sell your kids not to get addicted to drugs. Cause that's a sale. You're, 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 you know, as Christine said before, you're selling your position on a certain topic. Could be the topic of drugs or, you know, uh, alcohol or speeding in their car or doing all kinds of things that kids tend to do uh, if, if they haven't had the proper sale made to them, you know, getting in trouble with the police, all these kind of things. You're, if, if you can learn how to persuade people to see it from your perspective and come across into your uh, area, then you're not just winning for yourself. That's not about you. Cause let's be real. If your kids get on drugs, that's hurting them. <laughs> it hurts you, but it hurts them. So isn't it important that you could sell them on that or, how about this? Let's make it a little bit more lighthearted. I'm going to go to the movies with my wife and she wants to go see The Notebook. <laughs> I've never watched that movie. I hear, it's, I hear it's a cheek flick, but I don't want to go see that. I want to go see Arnold Schwarzenegger or something cool like for me. So we've got a difference of opinion. So right now, it's who is the best salesperson. Is, is, is my wife Vicky better at sales or myself? Now, she might be putting a foot down, right? And I've got to go, right, well, um, I'm not going to get, I'm not going to get uh, the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie yet. So why don't I um, make a smaller sale? Hey, let's go to dinner before we go to the movies. So maybe I can wine and dine her and, <laughs> you know, uh, get brownie points. And then maybe, hey, well, let's go see Arnold Schwarzenegger. I might be able to convince her if I have more time. And then, you know... Uh, let's make it even funnier. This is usually the Christine comment that like what happens after the movies when you come home, you want to be able to be pretty good at making that sale too. Right. <laughs> so um, look at the bottom, at the end of the day, you just got to find out what's important to the person. You got to tune into we FM, which is what's in it for me from their perspective. Uh, and it really just ties back into what Christine was saying before. Like it's about relationships. Now when people hear sales, like I've been a car salesman, that was not fun. People automatically hate you. They automatically hate you. I've, I've, I've been threatened physically just for saying, walking towards them to say hello. You know, I've, this is pretty funny, right? They automatically hate you. And I'm like, well, I was, well, I was going to give you this car for free, but now you've told me that. <laughs> so, um, you know, that, so, they're, they think that they think the slick sales and I think they're going to get ripped off. They think all that. And that's because people's bullshit made us so great now. And a few bad eggs gave the world a bad, uh, the, the world of sales, a bad name, but let's make no mistake. Uh, if you can, if you can find out what's important to someone else and then help them get that, you've got a customer for life. That's, that's it. You, 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 what, where people go wrong mostly is they think they try to impart what's important to themselves onto someone else and make the sale. When a great salesman will go, Hey, Christine, what, what's going on in your life? And then she'd tell me, and then I'd find out maybe, well, I do have a product that could help her. Maybe I don't, maybe I know someone that has a product that will help her. And if I, if I take either of those choices, 
Christine's definitely going to take my call the next time because she'll remember who's helped us. So that's where I went with it, Christine. That was like a whirlwind of ranting, but... <laughs> But I love it. And you bring up such an important point because people do often get quite aggressive and negative around salespeople, especially if you've got the name uh, like salesperson or whatever in, in your title. And it, it's a trust thing. And you know where it comes from, Joel? And this is something that I learned recently, why people are, are so like close-minded to, um, to being sold is because they don't even trust themselves. They lie to themselves all the time and they don't, they don't trust themselves. So they try and um, be aggressive, put up this wall straight away because they know that if they don't, they'll probably likely buy something they're, they're not meant, like they, they don't need or um, they don't trust themselves with their money or some of them know that they're, um, you know, a bleeding heart and they'll just give their money away, you know, like when on something that they really don't need to spend. Now, people like... Let's take it back a bit. The most important sale you'll ever make is the one to yourself. That's the most important one. And, you know, for me, um, you know, we're, we're in a network marketing business and we're, we've got other businesses as well. And we get the price objection coming up. And I bet you a lot of people get the price objection um, coming up in business. And if you're listening to this and you're in business, you've probably had customers or potential customers um, make it all about the money. Uh, I can't afford it or the price. But as we said, and this is something that Joel said, um, I think last week or week before, like 100% of people will buy. It's just whether they'll give you the money or another business or they'll spend it on something else that they don't need or they'll, you know, every, everyone's got money to spend. It's just what are their priorities? What are their values? And what are they going to um, buy with that money? So it's never about price. So that's just a myth. So we've got, to, we've got to get over that. People buy because they love a product or a brand and they think it's going to solve their problems. So if it's a health product, they'll buy it because they believe in it and they think, you know what, this is going to help me improve my health. If it's a fitness package, they will buy into that fitness package because they believe that um, this person or this brand is going to get me fitter and it's going to help me achieve X, Y, and X, Y, and Z goals that I want. Okay. So it's never about it. And um, as Grant Cardone says as well, like money is a mental issue. It's not a shortage is issue. It's never about money. It's about the mentality. It's about, um, you know, priorities. It's about values. You know, I invest in my health because health is a big priority for me. It's something I value. I want longevity. I want quality of life. I want to live a medication-free life. So, you know, I'm nearly in my 40s. I'm investing in my health now so that in 40 years' time, I'm not paying for it, for all the mistakes that I've made. I'm, I'm investing now so I have the compound effect and good health for the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years. But what a lot of people do is they, they don't make it a priority. They don't invest in their health now. They wait for the big scare and then they play catch up and then they try and undo all the damage. Well, I don't want to be that person. I've seen what that's done for people in my life, people close to me, people that I've lost, who I love and care about from preventable disease and illness. I've seen the heartache. I've seen the bank accounts be affected by disease. Um, and I don't want that for me or my family. So for me, health, I, I will spend money on you know, organic food. I will spend money on whole food supplementation. I will spend money on things that will improve my health um, because that's one of my priorities. Now, people on the other um, side of that who don't value health might spend money on alcohol. Maybe having fun and um, escaping reality is a priority to them. And so they will invest money into things that will make them escape um, the present. You know, so they'll, you know, invest in alcohol, they'll invest in illicit drugs, they'll invest in things that give them a high or a kick. Um, you know, there's that type of person. Or maybe you're someone that values beauty. You know, you love the way that you look and how it makes you feel. And maybe you get confidence from the way that you look. And so you will invest in, you know, the, the fake lashes, the Botox, um, get it, you know, your hair, doing skin treatments and everything like that. You know, so it's, it's all about priorities. People will spend money on things that they love or brands that they love, not necessarily things that they need, 
but things that they absolutely love. And if you're in business, as Joel said, it's about finding out what's important to that person. If I'm preaching health to someone that doesn't give a shit about health, but they give, they really care about beauty, then I'm, my products might not be um, perfect for them, but I know plenty of people in beauty that could really help this person gain the confidence that they want from looking a certain way. So you know what I mean? Like it's about really diving in and finding out not what you want for the person, but what do they want? Because here's what I know. People don't buy what they need. They buy what they want. <laughs> and uh, we spoke about this quite a bit last week in another call, Joel, but you know, what's, what's your take on this? Like in regards to um, people's behavior, I suppose, when it comes to, to buying. Absolutely. They will definitely buy what they want, not what they, what they need. <laughs> People need to have organic vegetables, but they want McDonald's. It's that simple. And, you know, people want, they, they need to buy or they, they need to go to the gym, <laughs> but they, they'd rather go out, like you said, and, and party, you know what I mean? Or sit on the couch and watch Netflix. So, you know, people, people will, the, the sale is made when someone believes that the value that they're going to receive is greater than the amount of money they're going to exchange. Because people, like, so it's, it's literally that binary. If they think that they are, I'm going to use dramatic language here, are ripping you off, like they're getting the good end of the deal, they're getting the good end of the stick, they will say yes. So um, if I was to say, uh, hey, uh, Christine, buy this pen for uh, $1,000, you're going to say no. <laughs> like if I said, hey, uh, buy this pen for $1,000 and I'll throw my car in. You're going to say yes. <laughs> Most people would say yes to that. You see what I mean? And I use massive extremes there, but that's, that's it. Money is never the objection. Money is either like the only reason why someone very, very, very few times is money the objection. Like if someone is homeless or they live in total poverty, then that's legit. So many people, like Christine said before, will go, I don't have the money because while they're SMSing on a brand new iPhone that they can't afford, like they def like if they want the money, if they want it, they'll find a way to buy it. So you've got to find a way to get people to want it. And the only way you can do that is to find out what they want and then match a product with that. Now, Christine's building massive reciprocity by uh, finding out that that person wanted, uh, cared about beauty and then, sending that person to someone that could help her. So like Christine's building up sort of like a, like credit with this person by helping them, you know, cause they, they think about that. If, if you were talking about buying a health food product off Christine and she says, Hey, listen, like I can, I notice that you're really um, into being in, into beauty. Uh, I've got this friend that you could talk to that is really great at this stuff. You'd probably be interested in what she's selling. Well, that person's going to walk away and go, wow, Christine didn't even sell me anything. She just wanted to help me. So that, that person will, next time Christine reaches out, is going to answer Christine. So that's what you want to do. You want to build so much value into the other people's lives. They almost feel like they owe you one. You know what I mean? And that's, I know, like, don't, this is not a, a slimy tactic. This is just how psychology works. So there's that. So like I said, money is never the objection. It's just a last ditch, get away from me, I'm just about to buy or a, a way to let you down easy so they don't have to say, listen, I don't really like you or your product. They're going to say, I don't have the money. So uh, there's that. So, but, but money is never like in 99.999% of the time. And no, you will not find the 10 people in the same day that all are in drastic poverty and can't buy your stuff. It's very rarely the thing. There's only really two overlying reasons why people won't buy. First of all, they're not the decision maker. So you could be talking to the wrong partner in the business or the wrong partner in the relationship. You know, maybe the wife can't buy the house on her own when you're trying to sell her a house. Maybe she can't make that decision on her own. Maybe the husband can't make the decision about the car on his own. You know, so you could... Try to sell them until you're pink in the face and you're never going to get a sale. 
because you're talking to the wrong person. You, you, you know, you couldn't talk to our kids about buying a house. You're talking to the wrong person. It's that crazy, right? And the only other reason is they don't believe it'll work for them. So what you're selling is not, they don't see the value in it because they don't believe it'll work in, for them. And the truth, the truthful underlying reason is that there's only one reason why people don't buy is that they don't believe in themselves. If they believed in themselves, they would get that credit card out and they would just swipe away and they buy their way to being uh, a billionaire, really, because there's no other reason to have money other than to spend it. It's got no other use. It's not, it doesn't look good on your mantelpiece. Like you can't do anything with it. It's just crap, really. <laughs> like, so there's only got one purpose is to spend on things to help you grow. And, you know, Christine spends her money on health food and organic food like that. Like sitting in her bank's not going to create better health. <laughs> <laughs> like for the long term. So I don't know, Christine, I, like, does that all make sense? Like, did I? <laughs> it does make sense. And, and I really want our listeners to get this as well, because um, the way that we do business today is not the same way that we did business 10 years ago, you know, and times have changed. You know, I, I have an online business, so I don't have a shop front. So the way that I'm going to sell uh, my health product is online through my social media, through, you know, connecting with people socially online. So, you know, someone commented on one of my posts the other day um, saying that, um, you know, they, they did love to follow me, but now they feel like all of a sudden I'm all about um, um, getting sales. Now, I, I thought about that comment for a while and I'm like, well, if I don't get sales, then my family doesn't eat. So, I do, but I do it in a way that's not pushy. I do it in a way where, you know, I, I don't tell people, I show people. I show people how, you know, the products that I sell fit into my life and how I use them. And, you know, I think that's where we need to really start changing our perception on sale. Now, um, a friend of ours, a mentor of ours, Scott DeMoulin, was on a call the other day and he shared this story about this autistic um, boy that had to sing the um, the American national anthem at a baseball match, and he got halfway through and started to started to laugh and lost his place. And then after a little while, the crowd kind of picked it up from there and started singing with him. And Scott was like, "My question was, why weren't they singing with him from the start? You know." And I I really related that that video, I went and watched the video and it's, it's a cool video, but I related that to business. Why don't we just support free people from the beginning? You know, why don't we, um, you know, show kindness and support our friends and family that go into business? You know, I'd like to think that I'm one of those friends that if my friends are in business, I support them. And if I'm, if they're not in my town or, you know, I still promote it to the people that I know that live there. Okay, so I'm constantly supporting because it takes courage, guys, to, to be in business. It takes a lot of balls to be in business. You know, people often put everything on the line to try and succeed in business. And we know that a lot of businesses fail in the first five years, a lot, like thousands and thousands and thousands of businesses are failing basically every week around the world. And, you know, it, it takes a lot of courage. So why aren't we just cheer, being people's cheerleader. Why aren't we starting the song and singing the song while they're, you know, getting started? Why, why do we be so close-minded and hate to be, like, hate that feeling of being sold when they're not even trying to sell to you anyway? You're probably not even there in their target market. And I started to think about, you know what, if I was in real estate and I was selling homes, because business has changed these days and the way we do business, I wouldn't just be relying on people coming into my shop. I would be putting the homes that I have for sale on social media because that's where you build, you know, the people that are following you, the people that are friends with you. I'm hoping that you've built up that trust and that rapport with those people that they would likely come to me and buy a home from me because I've built, I've, I've, put in the hard yards to really get to know my, my social media friends. You know what I mean? So what I'm trying to say is that why don't we change our perception 
and, and believe in ourselves and know that we've got enough willpower to say no if we don't want the product or the service, but still support people. You know, I've got a beautiful friend of mine um, sells a product here in the town that um, where I live, but I don't consume um, the product that she sells. And, um, but I still want to support her in business. So I'm still sharing with people um, where they can find her. And if you want this, this certain product, go down and see her. And you know what I mean? So I still support her, even though I don't use her product. Um, I, I'm still out there supporting her and loving on her and everything like that. And I, you know, in business, it can get friggin' lonely sometimes. You know, when you're trying to put food on the table, when you're trying to, you know, increase your bottom line, when you're trying to make the sales so that you can live the life that you want to live, it can get lonely. You know, you have to put in the hard yards and sometimes you are going to come up against, um, you know, people who uh, judge you for, you know, pulling back maybe on not being as social with them anymore. You know, there's going to be some ignorant people that come along that don't get, um, why you have to put in so much work and hours and effort into building this business to get it to the level of success that you want. And therefore you have to make sacrifices over here in your personal life. So you're going to come across that, but that's the beauty of having a business is so that you can have the freedom that only other people dream of. So for me, um, when people kind of question, um, you know, whether I'm selling, it's because I wholeheartedly believe that I have something to give. I use the product, I share it because I believe I'm giving more value to someone by sharing it with them. And that's what it comes down to. And then once I give them this amazing gift, I absolutely believe that what I sell is a gift. Then I go and exceed expectations by um, adding value in other areas of their life. So I don't know, Joel, like have I totally just gone, <laughs> gone bonkers with that one? Yeah, I love that we're talking about a lot of philosophy here around the selling because like I love being sold to. Like I used to hate it, but I love it now because it's someone working up the courage to uh, come and help me. Like the, like the only reason why someone's trying to sell me is because obviously they want to make money and they believe they have a product that is going to better my life. So why wouldn't we want people to sell to us? Like, you know what I mean? Like I've, I had someone from, uh, I got pitched about five times in the last three, two or three weeks about other network marketing companies where they believe that, hey, they genuinely believe that they had a superior way to do things than I did. And so they just shared it with me. I just let them have their piece because one, some of them are brand new. They've never been taught how to sell. And if I shut them down there, I'm creating a ripple in that could damage their family. So if you've ever been hard on, and I'm gonna, we're just going to keep saying network marketing, but every salesperson out there, if you've ever been hard on someone that's just, having a go, how do you know it's not their first go and they've never had the training? And that because you were so harsh on them, they never had the confidence to keep going and take those extra steps and you may have cost their family wealth. So I'm really, like, I remember what it was like when I was terrible at sales. I remember literally getting to, like, in, when I started in car sales, like, I could just literally go out and greet them and say, hey, uh, how are you going? My name's Joel. Uh, blah blah blah, and that's where i'd stop because i didn't know what to say next so all i would do is bring them into my sales manager and then i'd listen to the sales manager and then i'd learn the next bit and then the next bit it took me ages <laughs> and i was just going i don't know how to do this and um i got really great at follow-up which is another thing i want to say um which actually served me better than being good at sales because follow-up is me knowing enough about them to have another conversation about what's important to them so that that that's good so um I love being sold to because I'm thinking, wow, they're going to bring me something that I haven't thought of. That's going to make me better. So sell away <laughs> in, you know, uh, it's, it's never your product. It's always your offer. Can I just say back on that? You are going to get inundated after this podcast with people coming Good. to you. All sorts of stuff. You've just opened up a can of worms, my friend. It doesn't mean I'm going to answer you. <laughs> you can sell away. I've got good filtration systems. So 
the thing that um I like want to say about the like one of the biggest lessons I've got over the last um oh, probably five or six years is I was really worried about selling and losing friends. And now I'm like, please, please give me negativity about me trying to sell to you so I can, I don't have to spend all this time whether I'm going to be your friend anymore or not. I'll cut you out <laughs> if you don't like it. You know what I mean? Like, like just, and it's been so tough. Like that has been a really big challenge. Like I was, like I got people that uh, I held in high, really high regard and I was worried about them, what they'd think because they're in more traditional businesses, what they would think because I was in network marketing uh, as one of my businesses. And I was like, so scared to reach out to them. Now, if they don't like it, bad luck. <laughs> Cause you know, how do I know, how do I even know they're doing so well in their traditional business? How do I know that I'm not robbing them? You know, so sell, <laughs> but it's never your product. It's always your offer. Every like, they, let's be honest. You could find a copycat product in just about every category. So why, why do, so let's like Apple phones are not significantly better than the, I don't even know what the, the one of these other um, phones that they sell in the market. You know what I mean? Like I know there's flagship ones, but there's, there's cheaper ones, right? But why do people pay so much more money for the Apple when they can get the same thing for like a quarter of the price? Like, you know, within reason. Now I'm going to have lots of fan boys and girls like going, you don't know what it's like to have an Apple phone. It's like, but you're part of the club, right? So they're obviously putting out an offer that is more appetizing than the, than the other uh, companies. So it's, it's, if you aren't getting sales, it's your offer because you can have, who's ever seen a terrible product sell really well. Like we all have, you know, like McDonald's. <laughs> So they have a really great offer. Like they, like you get the food really fast. You know what you're going to get. Um, it's usually heartburn and <laughs> obesity, but um, you know, you know what you're going to get. So that they got a clear offer and it's better than the alternative of going home and uh, cooking for yourself. You know what I mean? So they've got a really great offer. It's really clear. So, so that's it. So um, yeah, it's, it's definitely not about your product and, um, I guess the final thing that I would love, love all you brand new salespeople, all you veterans, when someone is talking to you, please don't say, I'm not here to make a sale because you're full of it. You are here to make a sale. Stand up, put, wear the badge, wear the badge saying, I'm here to make a sale. I'm here to help your life. I care enough about you to be brave and stand up and say, Hey, I'm here to sell you this. I don't have, you don't have to say it like that, but you know what I mean? Someone says, oh, you're just trying to sell me. You say, absolutely. That's right. Because <laughs> you get first rule, Christine, I know you've been re reading uh, Grant Cardone, is always, 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 always agree. So if someone goes, you're just here to make a sale, and you go, no, I'm not. I'm not here to make a sale. You've already disagreed with them and you've just lost the sale. So yeah, I could go on for it. I can then. Yeah. I can go over days. <laughs> That's awesome. I was going to bring that up next, actually, but I'm still back on you um, being inundated with people coming. To, so I'm. Anyone My email address to, is Christine Drummond. At <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyone that comes to me now, I'm going to go look. It's not for me, but. My mate, Joel, he's, he's definitely open to hearing about this. So get ready, mate. You've just like, oh, it's hey, coming. Sell me how to get a Bentley for way less money now. Make that offer. <laughs> for the price of a pen oh but you're so true like it is um you know it is about um that agreement and you know people don't believe what they hear they believe what they see so if you are trying to sell something don't just try and tell them about it like actually show them have have some third party tools like whether it's written or a video or something that you can send them and if you're in business and i don't care what business you're in if you're in business you need to get to know your neighbors and I'll give you an example why. Um, one of our neighbours is in the um, he's in the car tire business. Now, when our car needed new tires, where do you think we went? We didn't go and Google, you know, people in our area. We knew our neighbour. We've built rapport with him. We've got trust with him, and we just basically knocked on his door and said, "Mate, can you get us some new tires for the car?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries. You know, 
bring it down tomorrow and I'll fix you up. You know, because we've, we know our neighbors, we know what they do, you know, we know what makes them tick, that kind of thing. So, you know, and we often say this as well, like if you're in business, being in network marketing is a great place for you to uh, share that business. Like network marketers um, have these awesome communities where they want to help each other out. They want to support each other. So if you're in the plumbing business, um, I would get your wife or yourself into network marketing because if they need a plumber in your area, they're going to come to you. So you automatically just increased your, your leads by thousands, you know? So whatever business you're in, always look at how can I get in front of more people? And that's why, you know, social media is so amazing. But I want to talk about the sales process and I want to relate it back to, um, you know, we finally got let out of our homes and we could go to cafes and things now. So I went to a cafe on the weekend and this lady went through the waitress went through these five steps perfectly that made me want to go in and wait the the waiting time that I needed um, in order to eat there. So the first step is to greet. Now, I don't know about you, but nothing frustrates me more than walking into a business and not being greeted. You don't know where to go, what you're looking for. Um, it's that awkward period, especially if you're in a cafe or a restaurant, no one's coming to, you don't know whether to sit down or whether you're supposed to wait. So greeting is so important. And if you've got an online business, it's even more important. So just greet yourself, like get to know the person, connect, let them know how awesome it is to connect with them. Um, the second thing is determine their wants and needs. So this lady at the cafe, she greeted me and then she said, are you here to, um, to eat in or would you like takeaway? And I said, I'm here to eat in and I need a table for two. And she was like, great, can you give me five minutes? I've got a table opening up. Um, do you have five minutes to wait? And I was like, yes, I do. So I'm willing to wait here until my table comes up because I've been greeted. She's determined uh, what I wanted um, and I'm willing to wait for it, okay? The next thing was um, she made the proposal, okay? So if you wait the five minutes, your table will open up and you can come in and sit here and eat. And then the last, the fifth one is closing the transaction. So once she sat us down, uh, she went away and helped a few other people, came back. She asked um, what we wanted to eat. And I just kind of said, well, I'm just going to go with her. She's eaten here before and she's recommended, you know, the fritters. And I, I love fritters, blah, blah, blah. And she said, the fritters are an awesome choice. However, we've got this dish on that's our most popular and you probably have never tried your eggs done like this before. So would you like to go with that? It's got a little bit of spice. Um, and I was like, yep, you've sold me. Because one of my highest needs, as Joel knows, is variety. <laughs> so I'm always going to try something new. Um, and this is something my dad taught me from a young age as well, because he got so frustrated when I went to um, my favorite Italian restaurant all the time, I would order the tortellini carbonara all the time. It's the best tortellini carbonara I've ever tasted on the planet. I've tried it at other restaurants. It just doesn't taste the same. It's, you know, you've got to go to this restaurant. So um, it, would, it would frustrate my dad that I would never change. I would never try anything else. And I don't know whether that's where my need for variety sprung from, but he was right. He was like, you, you never know what you're missing out on if you don't try these other things. So I'm glad that I did, but they went through that sales process perfectly. And, um, you know, we've got to think about that when we're in our own business, you know, how, like if you're the first point of contact in your business for that potential customer, like what is your greeting? You know, and people are getting really um, savvy with their greetings as well when um, customers have to ring in or potential customers ring in. And now they've got these really catchy um, and clever um, voice, you know, things while you're waiting to talk to somebody. So there's so many different ways that you can stand out and you can be unique in your greeting. Um, and then determine the next step is once you've greeted that person, well, why are they there? Why are they in your shop? Why are they there um, looking around or, or what are they actually looking for? Um, you know, you'll often hear it in retail, you know, are you okay or are you just here looking? Um, most of the time I just give the easy response, say, oh, I'm just having a look, like go away, leave me alone. I don't want to be bothered. I'll find what I need. Um, but if you're a good, if you're good at sales, 
you'll actually greet them in a different way and go and ask what brought you into the shop today, which is a much more um, empowering question because now the person has to think about, oh, why am I actually here? I'm, lo- I'm in here because I'm looking for a gift for somebody. Oh, great. Tell me more. You know, how old is the person? Is this a, is this a relative or is it a friend? Is it something you want to post? Or is it something that, um, you know, you want to give as a gift, you know, in person? You know, all these kind of things. If you're a great salesperson, you get curious about that other person. What do they actually want? And what do they actually need? Okay, because we know that people will buy more what they want than what they actually need. So I just wanted to run through those five steps of the sales process, Joel, because I think people overcomplicate the process. And also, I think people don't realize that follow-up, which you spoke about before, is in the sales process. Now, we know that majority of people out there don't follow up after the first initial, um, um, you know, catch-up, I guess, you know, or the first initial contact. But follow-up, we know that it takes at least, you know, seven to 12 exposures before people buy things these days. And there's so much information available to them that a lot of the time they would have done a lot of research already. So you're going to have to stand out. You're going to have to add extra value in order to um, let them know that you're the right choice. You're like, I'm your girl, like come to me if you need to do, 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 do. You need to have that kind of certainty and conviction in your product or service that you know you're the choice for them. Yeah. And if you're not, you do everything in your power to get them to someone who can meet their needs. And as Joel said, if you do that enough times, it comes back. You know, they will answer your call. They will refer people to you. Um, You know, it happened recently. I want to share another story just quickly. Um, On my mum's birthday, she just wanted a simple fish and chip lunch. Now, I was thinking, I'll just bring my own lunch. But then I got dumped with picking up the fish and chips for everybody, right? So I'm just like, okay, mum's birthday, we'll just eat fish and chips. It's not going to kill us. So I went to the shop, pre-ordered everything. And I said, can you have it ready for me to pick up at 12.30? They said, yep, no worries. I get there at 12.30. They're a couple minutes late, but, you know, it was all good. And because of all the restrictions and everything, you pretty much have to wait out on the street in the freezing cold (laughs) because they're only allowed to have a certain amount of people in the shop. Anyway, they bring it out. I look at it and I'm like, oh, it looks a bit small. Didn't check it. Jumped in the car drove to my mom's, we're having this, you know, opening it up, getting it all ready and we're missing half the order. (laughs) I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is so annoying. And the most important thing was I forgot to order my mum's what she wanted. (laughs) So I've had to ring them back and I was like, okay, we didn't get half our order and I forgot to order my mum's grilled fish. Can you please throw that on for us? And I'll be back shortly to pick it up. When I get there, the owner comes out and he greets me and he already remembered my name because he took my name for the order. And he goes, Christine, I am so sorry that uh, we forgot um, to give you the, you know, the rest of your order. And I was like, it's okay, mate. I saw how busy you were. It's all good. These things happen. Don't worry about it. Um, so when I get to the line to pick the rest of it up, he threw in the, the extra fish for free. He threw in like a tartar sauce. He threw in all this other stuff, extra chips, extra like potato scot. He threw in all this stuff. Now, I was going into that shop thinking, this is so friggin' annoying. Like, I've had to drive 10 minutes back to this shop to get this. We had to put everything else in the oven to keep it warm, blah, 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 blah. But him over-delivering, owning his mistake, greeting me by name, you know, he remembered my name. And then one of the other staff commented, made it a joke. He goes, Christine, you should have heard him when he realised he forgot half your order wow, you didn't want to be in the room, you know? So he knew, um, and then they made a joke about, made it feel light and they weren't embarrassed to, to talk about it in front of the rest of their customers. And then what do you think I'm going to do now? Like, I'm, I will go back to that shop. I was thinking I wasn't going to, but then when I went back and they over-delivered with their service, I was like, this is what business is about. It's about relationships. If you make a mistake in business, own the friggin' mistake, guys. Don't try and hide it. Don't try and cover it. Own up to it. People will appreciate that. And then go and over deliver. Go and do something that is going to keep that person um, from going somewhere else, that they will come back. And I just wanted to share that story, Joel, because 
that's part of the sales process as well, you know, and um, it was a good result at the end of the day. And yeah, he might have lost a little bit of money, but you know what? He's kept and maintained a customer and they still are the best fish and chip shop, you know, in our, in our local town. So, you know, I, I refer them. If people want fish and chips, I go, you got to go to this place. It's the best place in town, you know? So from that little act of service, He's probably got extra customers now coming to his business. People can see it anyway. Like people are lining up to get in that shop. That's how good it is. So anyway, Joel, I've digressed, but I just wanted to bring that in to, um, to this whole sales um, talk as well, because guys, if we're not selling, we're the ones that are being sold to. So you really have to um, start getting better at, delivering start getting better at taking care of people start getting better at asking the questions to dig a little bit deeper um you know and and really make people feel important you know that guy made me feel important that day you know so that's that's what it comes down to and remember that we are you're not in the business that you think you are you're in the people business you have to know how to take care of people so that's i guess that's it from me joel what did you want to add anything on the end here I just love that he turned you into an advocate and he's not only like if, if he had a, like he, he would have been on, his business would have been on this podcast regardless. It's just that you painted him in a positive light where if he hadn't have done what he did, it probably would have been a negative story would have had a negative ending. And you know, couple of hundred maybe thousands people will hear this and if they're ever in the area they would go use him no doubt and we we've said this before with Andy Priscilla we've said it before with like plenty of other people so um that's amazing he yeah it's look just take care of people and look honestly at the time of recording things are crazy the 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 markets the the economy is crazy um, and people are just, oh, Christine, people have got their head in the sand. Like I did an experiment the other day. I did three or four social media posts and three were about, um, jobs and businesses and income and stuff like that. Like really just painting a light on where the, the world economy is going and what it means, like the real economy, what, what, you know, what the hardworking people in the, the world are living in and not the fake one where all the banks have got all this money getting printed for them. Right. And this is no, this is in no way, shape or form a conspiracy theory. You just go look at the damn markets. You can see that they're rigged, right? <laughs> all the crazy things that are happening in the stock market still going up. And anyway, at the time of recording, uh, it doesn't matter cause it just flips over. So I got like very little engagement, very little. And like, I've got a fairly decent, active social media uh presence and so i did a i did a couple of uh different posts about what was your favorite cartoon as a kid and that had so much that had so much um astro boy engagement yeah hey i showed you that's on again <laughs> while we're getting our nerd on right what worries me right is that so many people have been sold on playing small you've bought it hook line and sinker you're not taking that risk you're too frightened to say yes to join that network marketing company to build that click funnel to start that business to start the um affiliate marketing business to start coaching to start oh, look go just go google how to start an online business and go pick one but you've been sold that it's hard. You're sold that you can't do it. You're sold that you're stupid or whatever bullshit you've been sold. You need to throw that in the bin and, and swap it around. For God's sake, sell yourself like Christine said at the beginning that you can do this. Like maybe not day one. Maybe it might take you four years. Maybe it might take you 10 years. But I'm curious if you could build a business that could give you $100,000 a year income and it took you 10 years to do it, would that be worth it? I, th I don't know. Like, I think it would be worth it to me. Like any extra income would be worth it. And what, it, what are most people doing anyway? Like 
watching Netflix or whatever they do. We wait, we waste so much time. We want you to have the intelligence just to sell yourself on that shit. If Christine can do it or Joel can do it or Annie Priscilla can do it or some other mentor that you've seen do it that you think's lucky can do it. They were just like you one day. They had all the same bull crap in their head. I was, I still have bull crap in my head today. Every damn day I've got to like scoop it out. <laughs> it's like, cause that's just how our brains work. We've got to just re sell ourselves and close ourselves every day that we can do it. So you've all been pitched by affiliate marketers, internet marketers, network marketers. You've seen flyers. You've seen stuff on Facebook. Go click one and go, just go even sign up to a bad one. <laughs> you know what I mean? Go pick one because you're going to, you're going to learn something. Go dip your toe in the water and go do something. If you, I don't know, Christine, like it, it's go, go be terrible and then become good at, over time. Like, don't worry about what you do day one, but go, I did like, I'm just such an advocate for being able to get hold of a product and then all the hard work's done for me and I can just sell that product. So that's where you start. You don't have to do what I did and go buy a supermarket because <laughs> that's that you want to know hard. That's hard and expensive and risky. And listen, you know, a lot of the huge billionaires now say that with the way the internet is now, if you spend money to start a business, you're, you're a flipping idiot. <laughs> You can get in and you can start a business for a couple of hundred bucks and just go from there. But guess what? You have to be good at sales. When I say good, you have to do sales. You can be terrible at sales and one person out of 10 is going to say yes. So there you go. Christine, that's me. What do you I reckon? love that, mate. I love it. And I'm just going to close out with Grant Cardone's 10 commandments of sales because I think this is really important for people to... Uh, here and it's a great way to close out our sales call today um, commandment number one be proud and be positive number two is dress for sales success number three is see the sale before it actually takes place commandment number four is be sold on your offer number five know your value proposition commandment number six always agree with your client Commandment number seven, super freak demonstration. Demonstrate do, double the value. Number eight is be time efficient. Nine is assume the close. And commandment number 10 is always persist in the close. And if you can do those commandments of sales, your sales numbers will increase. Your bottom line will increase. Your success will increase. And you will be able to uh, start living that life that you dreamed of when you first went into business. And that's what we want for you guys. We want you to be the boss of your life, not just have professional success. We want you to have per, um, personal success as well. So thank you for tuning in today. Congratulations on listening to the end. We appreciate you guys and we will see you on our next podcast. Good day.